Shalom everyone. Welcome back to another predestined predestined kingdom ministry or ministries international videos. I am Kenethia Johnson or Kenethia J. Welcome back. That's the neighbor passing by. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I believe in, I'm sorry, the Apostles' Creed. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for your time and your presence. I pray you are the doorman of my lips. No matter what, I speak and say what you want me to, and then get off this video. In Jesus Christ, I might be I trust myself even when I speak, no matter the persecution. That's the tough part. Be quiet. Was you supposed to say that? <laughs> That's the tough part. <laughs> But, nonetheless, I pray the same prayer before I speak. Psalm 141, you are the doorman of my lips. And trust it in Jesus Christ, our mighty name. As well as the listeners, the viewers watching, may this prayer always stay with them as well, given to us by Dr. Juanita Bynum. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for, call, for bringing the help. I believe in God, the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, and in the Lord God, Jesus Christ. Yeah, the thing is, like, when you're when you're studying or you're following under someone or you just care to learn what they have to give, write it down. You just never know why you're gonna need these Bible scriptures. It pays to write it down. That's why a lot of great leaders always telling us to pick up a pen and a pencil. You just don't know when you're gonna need this stuff. Like the Lord knows the end from the beginning. But as a server, somebody who's not dibbling and dabbling in witchcraft or just using gifts and actually being led by the Lord, he tells us when he needs us to know. <laughs> anyway, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in the Lord God, Jesus Christ, his only son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. He ascended into heaven and right now is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he is coming to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christianity Church, though I added that, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. In the almighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. So the first thing I'm seeing is do the numbers. So a lot of us have been seeing the number 222 and the number six or you've been seeing the number 2266 and so i got more revelation thanks to ebony from minx diva praise the lord <laughs> that's her like business so so six is not a only a judgment number it's like, that's like, you will see six, like if you're praying for judgment for your enemies, but there's a positive message for you. That's the Lord telling you it's time to start your family. Six is also a representation of family and inner balance. So those are two, rev two um, known keys we didn't know before. Okay. <laughs> we just know six is man. We know it is something we, we know God created man on the sixth day, but they never go into depth and say, okay, yeah, it's time for you to get married. Yeah, God's saying the number six, that's family, that's inner balance. It's not good for man to be alone. So that's just the Lord telling you, like, take the next step. You haven't made the phone call. You haven't manifested. You haven't done any of that. And they're saying you're not made, you're not putting forth the effort that you need to to even come together to have a family, and so that's just basically a rebuke from God as a man, if He's been telling you to manifest. Okay, so make sure you manifest. <laughs> Six is the number of family. Two is love. Two, two, two. I 
sit by my house and drink. <laughs> Just be a whole distraction. <laughs> So anyway, I'm sorry. They are though. The Lord is telling you, He's actually rebuking you for not manifesting. Are you seeing that? Which I said that the only way you could get judged is for like intention, like you just sitting over there every day while we over here going through it. Like God is gonna judge you because you got us waiting on you, and we don't have to wait on you. Like, that's what, the, he don't have to have this situation, not to, like, be arrogant, it's just out of respect for everybody. Nobody's time being wasted, nobody has to live with their enemy longer than that, than they need to, you know. <laughs> nobody has to, you know, wonder what they're gonna eat or drink the next day due to the, the, the affliction <laughs> in this house, like. And so that's the rebuke. You want the family, you want love, but you're not um, moving to the next step to make it happen. And so God is saying, make it happen. Take, do something. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing over there, says the Lord. All right, so that's for the number two and the number six. The next message is for Sam and Maddie, okay? God keep telling y'all to leave me alone. You manifesting people around me. You shifting up words. When I turn on the video, you spiritually stalking me. You're physically stalking me and saying it's spiritual, so you get in the way with it. God is rebuking you. You're putting your your you're locating people in my neighborhood, workers, businesses, to shift things, to make sure things aren't there when I need it. You're causing havoc. You're stirring up war every day. You're causing harm between me and my daughter. Her acting out, Sarah says the Lord. How are you not a false prophet? And why? Who is listening to you? Who is allowing you as a gatekeeper to access, thank you Holy Spirit, these certain, thanks Shabbat, these portals, these accesses that you have, you're not supposed to be doing it. That's what the Heavenly Father keeps saying. And you just making it seem like I'm crazy and God is not a liar. You can look at me and say I'm not God, but if he chose me to be a vessel, I'm speaking for him. You got to respect people and go your separate way. You don't stalk people in minor ways and, and, and or big ways and call it minor. You don't do anything bad and justify it to being good. That's the rebuke every day. You keep doing it. And you keep saying, well, we could drive her out of her mind. We could drive her to suicide. We could drive her to this. And God is just like, I'm still called. I, I called her and chose her. Morning doves manifesting in spirit animals all of that it's a rebuke what is a rebuke that's the heavenly father telling you that's something you're not supposed to be doing it's a sin disobedience disobedience is as of witchcraft and so it makes you look like a white witch you're just somebody who used to do witchcraft who's now just now being disobedient again. Because that's normally where you stem from. That was your testimony. You were in the dark arts before. So don't go back. You've backslidden. That's what God keeps saying. You don't already went back. You may not be holding a wand, but you're doing other sinful disobedient stuff that he keeps saying, that's not me. You know damn well I wouldn't let you follow that girl and drive her out of her mind like that. That's not love. God is love. When you when you when I say no to you, you're not allowed to go do this, to go do that, to to force people or bully your way into their life. Manipulation, control. And so the Lord says, "How are you still standing up there in the church like who 
has to go down with you because they keep allowing you to go prophesy or for you to even have your church. Samuel, you're manifesting referees and people into the NBA or ESPN. These people got to go down with you. They knew that, that y'all, what y'all intentions were towards me. And so anytime you see somebody trying to do something harmful to somebody else and they brush it under the rug because they're a big sponsor or they have riches or wealth that can be taken away by God at any moment, you're going to go do what they say instead of having a heart. You going down with them for the headache, the havoc, the, all of this. You have to go down with the person. And then y'all keep watching these videos and y'all mocking God, saying y'all stronger than him. Because, yeah, y'all think y'all getting away with what y'all doing, says the Holy Spirit, but you're not. Watch how you treat people. You got to reap what you sow. That's what God keeps saying. And he keeps saying it before death happened to somebody, child. Before somebody have a sudden death for being disobedient and having all that power in God. You think God going to let you walk around this earth and keep tormenting people? He needs you to keep showing yourself. So you could just keep showing yourself and explode. Like people do when they trying to control stuff. And then the whole thing just, they lose it. They lose their promised lands. They lose the blessings. They lose the love that God has given them all because of greed, pride, flesh, arrogance. You got to move on when somebody asks you respectfully or leave you respectfully. I ain't do nothing to y'all. You guys are mad because I don't go to your church or because God let me a separate way due to some disagreements. And you guys couldn't take it and this is how you respond. 